our uh, character controller animation scripting uh, with Unity. And what I want to talk about is finish up what we did last time with add force. Okay, as you may recall, by adding force, by giving a move velocity of around 100, we we're able to have it start real slow. The longer we apply the arrow or the joystick, the quicker it becomes. But we need a way of, of reaching a maximum speed and not overtaking that maximum speed. So we're going to do that, and then I'll show you how to turn your character left or right uh, based on are we moving to the left or are we moving to the right. And it's very straightforward. Now, to set our maximum speed, we're going to have to create yet another variable, and you'll never guess what we're going to call that variable. It's a variable that represents the maximum speed. How about we call it Bob the Chicken? No? Okay, how about max speed? Okay, we'll do it max speed. So we're going to go ahead. Um, I'm also going to make this public, just like before. That way we can test it out. Now, what, what's cool about this is you can keep the settings uh, in there, or we can even comment what we're going to do. Um, and on here, I'm pretty sure it needs to be a float. I hope it is. Maximum speed. So we're going to set it here. We make it public so we can set it in our game. And yes, it is a float. And in my uh, original test, I put it about seven. So we'll try it at seven, just a moment. Now we're in fixed update. So what we want to do is, um, remember how before we have this uh, velocity as a new vector and we applied the jump value to its Y velocity? Uh, we're gonna do the same thing now where we basically are going to prevent it from ever going any faster. And so we're going to use the variable that we created here, all of this, to set our speed uh, and then to prevent it from going beyond the maximum speed. And to do that, we're going to use what's called um, clamp. It's part of the math um, class. So we'll do that. So the first thing we want to do, it's in f a fixed update. After we've already added our force, we're going to check something. And so, in a, way, in a way, this is kind of a check. Um, and we want to, the thing is, we could be going to the left, we could be going to the right. So we could have an x velocity that is a negative value or x velocity that is positive. And our maximum speed could be negative 7 or positive 7, if that's the number we end up with. So what we need to do is we need to get the absolute value of our velocity's x movement. So we're going to use math, math f, and we're going to put dot. And the very first function is what we want. ABS stands for absolute value. So um, we take RB, and we're going to check its velocity, dot x. We want the absolute value of x. So if it was negative uh, 20, it'll be 20. If it was positive 20, it will still be 20. So that's why we want the absolute value. If the absolute value is greater than maximum speed, then we're going to want to set it to max speed. I hope this makes sense. So if ever our velocity gets greater than the maximum speed, um, now we're going to need to change it. Of course, our maximum speed could be in the negative or the positive, so we're going to have to actually use we're going to have to actually use uh, the move variable that we created up here. So we're going to put on here rb dot velocity. So we're going to create a new vector 2. And we're going to keep the y. But now we're going to say get our maximum speed and multiply it by move. comma, rb dot velocity dot y. So basically, we're saying here, maximum speed, let's say it's 7. But let's say we're moving to the left. So we're technically, we have a velocity x of negative 7, or let's say negative 10. And our maximum speed is 7. So if we're going negative 10, but our maximum speed is 7, we're going to say, is the absolute value of negative 10 greater than 7? Well, yes, because 10 is greater than 7. So now we're going to change its velocity to keep the x from ever going any greater. So it's also a vector 2. 
Um, but we have to multiply maximum speed by move because we're moving to the left, so that's a negative one. So that's the same as saying seven times negative one. In other words, negative seven. And then we keep velocity of y exactly as it is, um, and this prevents us from going any faster than we want. So let's test this out. Let's build, make sure we don't have any errors. Build was successful. I'm going to go back to Unity. And hopefully we will now have maximum speed. And we're going to set it at 7. Yep, so there's move velocity. I think we applied 10 maximum speed of 7. So we can't go any faster than that. And we're going to test it out. Of course, we're going to probably want a long runway for this. Uh-oh, I'm stuck. I'm not moving. That's not a good sign. Well, see, there's our problem. We, we set move velocity to 10. I meant to set it at 100. And we got maximum speed of 22. I'm going to do a maximum speed of 5 and test them out here. And you can only go so fast on there. And you saw pretty much the, the maximum speed here. So let's go back. We'll set this back to 100. Maximum speed. Now we'll try 7 and test it out. A little greater number of the maximum speed. He's going a little faster. And so we can keep adjusting the maximum speed until we get a value that we like. Uh, if I were to try 20, we could get it going a lot faster. And there you have it. The other thing I want you to try doing to see if this works is jump in the air. And while you're in the air, try to move to the left or right, and it doesn't work. It only works when you're grounded, young man. The last thing I want to do in this video is talk about how can we move to the left or the right. So right after our variable called grounded, we're going to create another Boolean and we're going to call it facing right. And I'm going to call it facing right because that's the way the original sprite faces. Uh, I could have, if it was facing left, I could have called it facing left. Um, or I could have, if it was facing left, I could have set facing right to uh, false. In this case, I'm going to set it to true. Okay. So the, the sprite already is facing right. So we set it to true because that's the way it's facing. Next, what we're going to do is when we move, we have the opportunity to either flip to the left or flip to the right. So what I'm going to do after all of our check if grounded, I'm going to create another method called flip, capital F. And at this point, I've got nothing coded in it. We will code it out in just a moment. But while we're in fixed update and we're already getting this move, what we can do is we can flip our character to the left or right based on the value of move. So what we can do is we can do a check if move is greater than uh, zero. Okay. So in other words, we are moving to the right and we're not already facing right so we put the double and for and and facing right so if we are moving to the right and facing right has been set to false what we can do is we can run the flip method to flip our character okay then we're going to try an else if so if that's not the case if otherwise if move is less than zero and is facing right okay basically the idea here is if we are not facing the direction we are moving we need to flip okay because this means we're moving to the right but this says we're not facing right this is we're moving to the left and in this case we're moving to the left but we're facing right we got to flip anyway so either way we're going to flip it flip it good so that's what you want to add, and I put it in fixed update because that's where I got the move variable. So we're going to use that for all we can. So you see, we move, 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 move. All right, so now the last thing we want to do is code out the flip method. So go down to your flip, and here's where we got to do this. Okay, on flip, we're going to set facing right 
to the opposite of facing right, not facing right. Of course, this works either way. If facing right was true, not, it will be not true, which is false. If facing right was false before we flipped, then not false is true, so now facing right will become true. So either way, it flips the value of facing right. So that's the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we change that variable so the next time we need to flip, we know what fa which way we're facing. Now, in order to flip it, we need to change. We're going to actually use vector 3. And I, honestly, I don't remember why. This is just from another tutorial I found. We're going to create a variable called the scale. And we're going to e equal oops, transform dot local scale. And then we're going to write the scale dot x. Now, because it's a, it's, a, it's a vector 3, and the scale is a transform on the local scale, we have the value of x, y, or z. So, see, any one of those. But it's the scale dot x. And then we're just going to multiply it by negative 1. And that just reverses the x scale. So if it was 100%, it's going to be negative 100, which actually just flips it. And then we're going to transform local scale. We're going to set it to the scale, like so. So this should flip our character. Go ahead and build it and test it out. So I'm back at Unity. I've saved my chain, or I saved the, I built the script. So the script is saved. Let's see. Yep, he faces the left. Now he faces the right. Face the left, face the right. And, of course, he can't stay on the platform. Really tough one to stay on. All right, but at this point, we've got our flip working. So we can add force. We can change direction. And in a later tutorial, I'll, I'll talk about how we can then change the animators to change our animation state. Stay tuned for that one.